Israelis mourned their departure from Gaza in 2005, and some thought the mourning would be over after the withdrawal. But this is Gaza today. Rather than bringing renewed security to Israel, today Gaza is a boiling pot of Islamic terror focused on Israel. CBN News followed closely one of the leading terror groups called Islamic Jihad and learned Islamic radicals now have greater, more powerful tools of terror than ever before. These Gaza-made rockets are being fired at Israeli targets just over the border. Added to the arsenal, Zilzal cordless roadside bombs activated by cell phones. And now, since the Israelis are gone, terrorists fearlessly train in the open. How to fight, how to patrol, how to crawl long distances and reach Israeli targets. These militants endure pain to build their stamina for what lies ahead. Now women are used more and given terror assignments. This woman demonstrates how to carry the explosive suicide belt around her waist. <laughs> Nafez Azam is one of the leaders of Islamic Jihad. Israel recently added him to its list of targeted terrorists, and with good reason. Azam says his total focus is not politics, but Israel's destruction, and he says he will never disarm. Here and everywhere in Israel, authorities are standing guard against terrorist attacks. But while some terrorist groups politicize their moves, members of Islamic Jihad remain focused on the war against Israel from their central training ground in Gaza. John Wagi, CBN News, Ma'ali Adamim, Israel. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in the news, by the way, uh, Hamas is uh, apparently overrunning Fatah. They, they're quickly taking control of that entire Gaza Strip. And from there, that uh, so-called Palestinian authority is going to begin to unravel. It's, it's a serious war going on, bloodthirsty war. Well, our next guest is a former Palestinian terrorist. He's now born-again Christian. He's written a fascinating new book that uh, is entitled, quote, Why We Want to Kill You. <laughs> Will you please welcome back to the 700 Club, Wally and Shobat. It's good to have you back with us. See you again, Pat. Thank you. Thank you. It's a wonderful book. I congratulate you on it. Why Thank we you. want to kill you. You know, uh, the Western commentators say, well, these people are poor. They're brought up in, in uh, substandard conditions, and they envy the West, and they're angry because of the uh, Western affluence, and therefore they, they want to protest. Is that why they sh blow themselves up? If the reason for suicide bombing is poverty mm -hmm. and lack of ho and hopelessness, why would you never find in the Palestinian areas Christians who commit suicide bombing? Mm -hmm. uh, the argument could be is, wait a minute, Christians are not accustomed to suicide bombing. Well, you have the second largest terror organization after the PLO is the PFLP, Popular Front to Liberate Palestine, mm -hmm. which is ran by a Christian terrorist by the name of George Habash. Yeah. Now, George Habash, his organization, whenever they need a suicide bomber, or they would use a Muslim, always, 100% of the time. The, the Hindus don't have suicide bombers, and the Buddhists don't have suicide bombers. That's a very good point. At a university speech, one professor objected to my speech. He said, it's, the reason for terrorism is poverty. So I asked in the audience, I said, do we have anybody from India? Mm -hmm. And one student said, I'm from India. I said, do you guys blow yourselves up as a result of poverty in India? He says, you know, we have lots of poverty in India. None of us blow ourselves up. But they sure come from Pakistan, and they blow us up. <laughs> <laughs> you showed something in here, though. The promise of, uh, of Islam, and there are people in America that don't believe this, the 72 virgins and perpetual erection and all this stuff. What do they teach? What do they say that these young men are going to get to? Here's the element that Westerners don't understand why this jihad is going on and why they're killing and why they're dying. It's a message of salvation that Islam is offering. 
Christianity offers a message of salvation that by the death of one person, Christ, right. by the drop of his blood that we are saved. In Islam, there is no assurance of salvation. Mm -hmm. The only way one can assure himself for salvation is by their own death, by the first drop of the blood of the martyr. Mm -hmm. He now can enter into heaven and intercede for 70 members of his family or her family. Mm -hmm. So when my cousin Ra'id got killed, my aunt Fatima had a wedding celebration. It's the, it's, it's, it's the law of opposite. Everything. They, she had a, they, your cousin was, was, he was killed as a, as a martyr, blew herself up, and they had a wedding celebration? Well, he was killed before well, he, he, was, he, 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 he was shot. The Israelis figured out what he was going to do, and they, oh, okay. he was killed. Right. And, and my Aunt Fatima had a wedding celebration. They, this is what the Westerners don't understand. The entire community mm -hmm. will come and join in this wedding celebration. The Friday prayer and the mosque will have a festivity for the death of the martyr. The house of the martyr becomes a museum where the entire community flocks to visit. Posters all over the streets for the martyr because now he's entered into paradise. This is the problem with Islam is because Islam rejects the intercession of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. However, Islam does offer the intercession of the martyr, the intercession of a sinner. Well, now, he gets 72 virgins, pure black-eyed virgins who've never been touched by jinn or man. It's not just 72 virgins, but... Oh, it's not 72? It's 72 mansions. Oh, 72 in, mansions? In each mansion, mansion, 72 beds, and in each bed, 72 virgins. That math staggers me. 72 times 72 times 72. That guy's going to wear himself out for his... <laughs> <laughs> it really doesn't make any sense. But th the main issue is not that. The main issue is the salvation issue. All right. They want to be saved. And in order to be saved, you die. And because the Quran itself, it says, do not think that the ones who die in the cause of Allah are dead, but are alive with Allah receiving his blessings. You know, the people in America, you, you point out in this book uh, about how we have been duped by the so-called moderate Muslims. This is fundamental teaching of the Quran and of the, of the Islamic world, isn't it? You're not talking about some aberrant group. Absolutely. I mean, Jafar al-Tayyar, at the time of Muhammad, okay, a relative of the Prophet Muhammad, right. died in his suicide act as he attacked the enemy. And he, was, he had wings, they call him the Flying Jafar. So suicide missions was in the time of Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam. Mm -hmm. The Americans are being duped with this moderate Islam. There are liberal Muslims mm -hmm. who don't care about fundamental view of Islam. But however, by far, uh, the, the fundamentalist view of Islam, Islamic as a religion, has always been taught to us as jihad. Because we, you know, when you read in the Bible about Antichrist, let's say, yeah. he honors a god of war. He honors a god of fortresses. That's right. In Islam, uh, Allah you know, is a god of war. Uh, he, he doesn't honor the desire of women. In Islam, they don't honor the desire of women either. So it's a very antichrist system. It attempts to change times and laws in the Bible regarding the antichrist system. And if you look at Islam, what do they want to do? Change the laws of the world. Sure. So all this interpretation that we had in the West about, you know, what is this about changing the laws? They think it's the cosmos or this. No, it's simply what it says. Um, you pointed out that Allah... Uh, uh, in the Quran, am I correct in this, is actually a deceiver, that he has the attributes of Satan himself? Well, the 99 names of Allah are very well known in Islam. Yeah. Some of these names, if you look at them, one of the names of Allah in the Quran is Al-Mutakabbir, which means the most proud one. Mm. When I read the Bible as a Muslim, and I saw the most proud one in the Bible was Satan, or al mumit the one who causes death. Well, exactly. well, you know, I'm just writing a book. I've just finished one on humility. And the truth is the, the, the root sin of the world is pride. pride. Uh, yeah, I will exalt myself upon the throne yes. of God. And that's the problem where Muslims cannot see the truth from the Bible. But the one that they say is Allah is the most proud the most, one. The most. We say al mutakabbir Yeah. It's the El, like the Elohim. El, yeah. El is the most proud one. So the most proud one is Allah. But that's really Satan. Exactly. And it's worse than that because he's the one who causes death, al mumit yeah. al makr the great deceiver. Yes. This is the names of Allah in the Quran. So they, they really believe the, the great deceiver? Yes. I mean, 
in America, we don't hear this. Yes, in the Quran, it says, it says, وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَكْرِينَ They, you know, Allah is the greatest of all deceivers. So it is okay, for, that's why Islam has deception and war. Mm. That's why Islam offers hudna or a, C, a P, peace treaty to non-Muslims up to 10 years, but they must break the peace treaty somewhere. Well, the hudna was Oslo, in other words... Uh, you Americans called it the Oslo Peace Accord, yeah. we called it the Oslo Hudna Accord. Hudna. So a hudna is a treaty, it's actually not a peace treaty, it's a ceasefire. In Islam, we're allowed to have a ceasefire for two reasons. For reason number one, to gain concessions. Yes. Reason number two. Two, to deceive the enemy and destroy them in the end. What about 